All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about watch lists and why they're important. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on Fidelity. First, we'll go through the website and then we'll go through the Fidelity Active Trader Pro because I think there's some things that will definitely be helpful for your trading. So stick around and let's get right into it. So the first thing you need to do is you need a Fidelity account. You have to make a create a login and then under news and research, you're going to go under watch list. You first do a watch list. You won't have anything listed. This is under one of my tabs that I made for long term holds. So we'll do it like we're mad at, we're going to make a new one. So we're going to create a new watch list and we're going to label this YouTube portfolio. And then it's going to look like this. So this will be your new look. Next you need to do is you need to add the symbols. So on the top right, you click add symbols. And we'll add a few symbols and then we'll go through them and what makes them useful. So we'll add Coca-Cola, we'll add Procter & Gamble, we'll add Costco, we'll do Apple, and then let's just add Microsoft too. See if I can figure out how to spell it, there you go. So there's Microsoft. So now it'll pop up here and you can see the pop-up that Fidelity offers so that you can see you have your list of stocks come up. So now let's get a little more detailed because there's a lot more that Fidelity offers under these watch lists that I think will be very helpful. So under the watch list, you have your title and then you'll see overview, monitoring, dividends, fund performance, detailed quote, and then we'll break down my view at the end, which I personally like because you can set it up and tailor to how what you exactly want to see. So the first thing is, when you just have overview, it just gives you it gives you a generic look. It'll give you the last price of Coca-Cola, what the day's gains and losses will be, the total gains and loss, and the value if you own anything. Next, if you go into monitoring, it's a little more specific, and you can see what the bid is and what the ask is. Now, for newer traders, this is what the bid is. So somebody's willing to pay $57.94 and the ask is $57.96 they're trying to sell it for. And this gives you the volume for the day. You have the day range, which is very useful. So if you're trading it or you're looking to get an entry, you can see, okay, it trades at $57.75 and the high today is $58.64. What I really like the watch list for is this column right here, the 52 week range. This is one year, you can see that Coca-Cola went from $54 up to $65. That's good to know, especially if you're going to be doing long-term trading or you're just looking to have an entry on a stock. So for me, it's very useful to look at the 52-week range and scroll through the stocks that I have on my watch list that I have not yet bought, but I'm watching them to make a potential entry if I'm going to try to buy them for long-term or short-term. It's good to get a good idea. The next tab is dividends, and this is really important, especially if you're a dividend investor. I'm going to add one more symbol that is proven to give dividends over a long time because I think it'll be good to see the difference as we're looking at it. So a good example is when you click under dividends, let's go to realty income, which is right here. It'll show us the last price at $54.10. It shows you the change for the day. But more importantly, if you're a dividend investor, it shows the X date. So X date means that you need to own shares before September 29th, 2023, and then you will receive the dividend. So if you own shares of realty income on September 29th, 2023, you will get paid out payday on October 13th, 2023, 25 cents per share, which is showing a yield of 5.56%. So I think it's good if you're a dividend investor, you could put your dividend portfolio in here and then you can see when are the X dates and then when are how much of the amount of shares and then what's the pay date. So it gives you a good idea, which I think is very valuable because it's quick snapshot. You don't have to do any research. You just do it under dividends, under the watch list, and then you can quickly see, okay, realty income, I have to have shares by 929. I'm going to get paid October 13th. Look at Coca-Cola for an example. It trades at $57.94. The X date is September 14th, 2023. You're going to get paid $0.46 cents per share that you own. And then you'll get paid out on October 2nd with a yield of 3.15% on the year. So it gives you a quick snapshot of when you're going to receive your dividends. 
under each tab, whether it's overview, monitoring, dividends, you'll notice that you have these three little dots. So let's say Coca-Cola, we click on this dot and that gives us the option because we have a Fidelity account, we could buy Coca-Cola shares, we could sell, we can click on for research, we can look at the options chain, we can set alerts, or we can paper trade. And if you hit paper trade, you can type the dollar amount that you want, and then you can put how many shares you're gonna buy. And then you can save it, and it'll paper trade for you. So even if you don't have money, this could be useful for you because you can test out some of your day trades. So I think it's very valuable. Now this part is one of my favorite features. It's called fund performance. And you can research mutual funds or index funds. So what I do is if you've, if you've seen my channel, you'll know that there's three funds that I hold long-term my taxable brokerage account. So I'm gonna bring them up so we can compare them. And it gives you a good idea, a quick snapshot on them. And you can compare them as you're you know, looking through. So let me just add the other one because I'm not sure why that one didn't add up. All right, good. So now we have all three added. And this is in my taxable portfolio, and you can refer back to my channel. But looking at SCHD, which is a U.S. dividend ETF, or FSPGX, which is a large growth, which is basically all growth stocks, or you have FNILX, which is the S&P 500, but you can get a, a quick glimpse and look at the year to date, the one year, three year, five year, 10 year. You can look at the expense ratio, what it's going to cost you to own these. So this is what I'm paying to hold these funds in my taxable brokerage account. And then you can get the Morningstar overall view on them, how many stars they're rated. So I think this is a nice way that if you were looking at mutual funds and you weren't sure how they compare up to, you know, up to what you normally hold, you can easily just quickly compare them and get a quick glimpse and a snapshot on expense ratios, how it's been performing over 10 years. And then you'll know if it's a newer mutual fund because notice how this only has a three year track record, which is following like, let's say SCHD, which is giving you a 10 year track record. So it's giving you a good idea of how this fund performs over time. Under the tab detail quote, you'll have your list of your stocks that you already listed. You can add the symbols if you want. If you want, you can delete them too. You just have to click on that dot, that triple dot, and then click delete, and it'll get rid of it for you. And now you'll see under equity summary score, it'll give you what the analysts are believe out of this out of 10. So 4.9 neutral for Coca-Cola, Apple's bullish at 8.3, Microsoft's bullish at 8.8, .8, and realty income is bearish at 1.8. You can see the average volume for the 90 day period. You can see the P.E. ratio, which is nice. So you can see Coca-Cola is 24, while Realty Income is 41 as their P.E. ratio. And just to see like a really high, a high P.E. ratio, we'll, put, we'll add Tesla to this list so you can see. Tesla, its P.E. ratio is 78 compared to the others. So you just get a good idea based on that. You can see the market cap, how big are these companies? Look at Tesla's market cap, $870 billion. And Apple is $2.74 trillion. So you can get an idea of the size of these companies. You can see how many shares are outstanding. And then what's the short interest on them? So a good example is let's bring up a stock off the top of my head that I think would probably have a lot of short interest. We'll put in Lucid. That means that people believe it's going to go down. The institutions are shorting it. So look at Lucid has 9% short interest compared to what, let's say, Microsoft is 0.52%, showing confidence that the stock is going to be going up in the long term. And then you have the share short. Besides the percentage, it'll give you how many shares that actually are. And it's in the millions because it says the M. And I think this gives you a nice little detailed view on it. But next, let's go under my view because you can tailor it to anything that you want to see up here. So under my view... You click the tab, you can either click this button or you can click this create my view, which gives you the same look. So next, now we're going to look at it and we're going to create my view. So the first thing I'm looking for is I want to see the last price that it was. And then we're just going to go through this. I like to see what's the bid, what's the ask. We will look at the PE ratio. We'll look at the market cap so we can see how big it is. Next, what we'll do is we will look for 
there it is, yield, the pay date, the amount per share, and the X date. Now let's scroll down. And if you have shares of this, you can look at your estimated annual income. We'll go down. I like to see the industry and the sector. And then we'll look at the performance of the fund, if it is a fund, over 10 years. And you can get your purchase price in there if you own it, the quantity, the amount of shares you own, or the cost basis. And we'll just stick to that right now. So now we'll hit save. So now I just custom created the last price, the bid, the ask, the PE ratio, the market cap. And if you scroll to the left, well, I guess technically to the right, you'll see the market cap, the yield, the pay date, the amount per share, the X dividend date that you have to own it by to get this pay date. And you can see the industry, beverages, or sector for consumer staples. And this allows you to pick out stocks that you might want to hold long term, and you can break it down by sector and industry. So I think it's very valuable to go to my view and you can kind of tailor it to what you want because if you just do overview, you won't have, you'll have to change this on your own. So if you just, if you switch back to my view and you customize what you want to see up here, you're able to tailor it to how you want to see it fit, which I think is very useful. So now that we covered the Fidelity website, now that you're on Fidelity Active Trader Pro, you can do the same thing with the watch list up here. So you go under quotes and watch lists and it'll bring up this browser of quotes, time and sales, and then click on watch lists. And then under watch lists, you can expand it just so everybody can see. And you can, anything you save on the website is going to be saved here. So under volatility watch lists, you go to here and we'll go under long-term holds. So under long-term holds, you can see the symbols, the Costco, Coca-Cola, LMT, AT&T, JEPQ, JEPI. You can look at the last price, the change, the bid, the ask. And keep in mind, if you want to move this over, you just click on it and you can scroll and move it over to each one. So if you wanted that over there, you can switch them that way. And this can give you the 52-week range and the earnings dates as well. Now, if you want to get more specific with it, you can manage and you can add and remove the columns. Add and remove columns means that you're removing these tabs. Like say you didn't want volume in there, you can remove that. You can edit your watch list. Edit, editing your watch list means that you're deleting or adding symbols, stocks that you are watching. So go to add and remove columns. When you click on add and remove columns, this is what pops up. So now you're gonna see, you can click if you want it to show or not. So if you want to see the extended hours last, you can unclick it if you don't want it to show. And all you have to do is, let's bring up a new one so you can see, we'll scroll this down. Anything in the selected columns is whatever you click. So if you click this, it's gonna to start to show. So if I clicked open, it's gonna show it down here. But if I unclick open, it's gonna get rid of it. To give you one more example on that, close date, I click close date, it adds it on this. This is what on the selected columns is what you're actually going to see when you close this tab over here. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to hit OK, apply. And then whatever changes you made is what's going to show here. So your watch list can be very useful because you can add different things. Like I have close date over here on the left side of the screen. So you can always just quickly go back into editing it, managing that list. And if you want to get rid of it, you don't have to find it on the left side. You can scroll down here, click on it, and you can move it up or down if you want on the column. But if you want to get rid of it, I just realized that you have to go back and find it. So we'll look for close date, which I'm not sure where it is. This might take a second. Let's see. And that's kind of a nuance about this. You're gonna to have to scroll through and look through everything that you clicked to make sure that it's on or not. But it's definitely another way that you can do this. And then you just hit apply. But you can do your watch list through Fidelity Active Trader Pro. And I think that's useful too if you're watching a certain amount of stocks, you can pick what you want. So as the market is, is trading, 
you can go through and make your list on whatever you want it to be. Let's say you just want it to be futures. You can watch the futures as the market's opening or at nighttime as well. So Fidelity Active Trader Pro offers it as well and very useful, especially if you're watching a few stocks. Now let me just give you a little thing that I use it for just to add some more so it's more applicable. I add the indices and I have like the SPY, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ QQQ, and then like semiconductors, NDX. I like to have them up and I have the percent change, where VWAP is, and the last price. So it tells me where they're, where they're trading, if it's a bullish day or a bearish day. So that gives me a good idea on what's going on. All right, thanks for tuning in to watch this episode. I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. And if you feel like you learned something, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's always appreciated. I'll always respond back to you. And if there's any videos that you want, always just send a comment in and I'll make a video on it. All right, until next time.